Hi everybody, my name is Jo Cardwell, as Anna said, and I'm a Managing Director at Bank of America, working in technology. I'm really excited to be here today for the opening of Code First Girls Code Fest event and proud of Bank of America's long-standing engagement with Code First Girls. I'm going to spend about 15 minutes talking to you and I've got two key objectives. I want to help each and every one of you believe that you can succeed in a career in technology and that we as hiring managers need your skills. And I want to inspire you to embrace the opportunity that CodeVest gives you. Be brave, step out of your comfort zone and seize the moment. Ask questions, be present and engaged and make connections. So who am I and why am I qualified to talk to you today? Well, as I mentioned, I'm an, I'm an MD working in technology at Bank of America, and I've got a global team of just under 300 people. As Anna said, I've worked at the bank for 30 years, and yes, I am that old. Um, and I trained first in the Ministry of Defence and then in British Gas. So my entire career has been spent working in technology, initially as a developer, and then gradually evolving into the role that I've got today. Like many of you, I didn't follow a traditional route into technology. I didn't go to university. And instead, I left sixth form with A-levels in maths, history and German. Other than my maths A-level, I have no educational qualifications in STEM subjects at all, um, not a single science GCSE to my name. So obviously not a traditional computer scientist. So I left college with a weird combination of A-levels that didn't really qualify for me for anything, but I was desperate to get into work. My route into technology was not intentional. In those days, I'd never even seen a computer. Uh, we didn't have computers at college, nobody had them at home. So I didn't really have any idea um, what was involved. My parents were disappointed I wasn't going to uni, so they told me I had to get a job that needed my A-levels. So I applied to the civil service um, to do accounting. Now, during the interview process, they asked me to do an aptitude for technology. So I just did it, I didn't really know what it was, and I passed. And at that stage, I had no idea what I was letting myself in for. I had I enrolled in the Ministry of Defence and I was based, co-located with the Royal Army Pay Corps close to my home in Hampshire. I spent three months training, a whirlwind of activity and information overload before joining a team to do productive work. Despite my three months of training, I had no idea what I was doing. And when I say no idea, I mean really no idea. Um, but I was fortunate enough to be coached by two NCOs who were then and remain today among the best technologists I've met, despite having joined the army at 16 with little or no formal qualifications. That experience, as well as my own lack of a university of education, has definitely influenced my personal approach to hiring and to diversity in general. Research published by Forbes in 2017 found that teams outperform individual decision makers 68% of the time and that decision making improves as team diversity increases. So compared to individual decision makers, an all male team will make better business decisions 58% of the time, while gender diverse teams do so 73% of the time. Based on this and a plethora of other research available, hiring managers like me are keen to recruit more diverse talent so they can realize these improved results. At Bank of America, technology is at the heart of everything that we do. And our commitment to diversity and inclusion comes from our CEO, Brian Moynihan, who heads the company's Diversity and Inclusion Council and leads by example. The technology industry, though, finds it hard to attract enough diverse talent into technology through trad traditional means. And by that, I mean via the recruitment of university graduates who've studied computer science or a related degree. Recent UCAS data shows that women make up just 13% of students studying computer science related courses in the UK. So that means we won't increase our diversity if we continue to rely only on the traditional methods of hiring. So when I hire junior talent, I'm looking for people with the potential to succeed in a career in technology, not proven experience or skills, but potential. So what attributes does that require? An analytical mind, intellectual curiosity, good communication skills, the ability to work as part of a team, to collaborate well with others. None of these are assets that only a computer science graduate possesses. However, historically, it would be difficult for candidates who hadn't attended university to demonstrate their potential or to find contacts who could give them advice and guidance on how to start a career in technology. Code First Girls is helping to plug this gap by creating a diverse pipeline of talent 
for employers. They do this by giving all of you the opportunity to take structured training that lets you demonstrate your potential, as well as providing mentorship opportunities, giving guidance on how to start. Remember, the majority of instructors on the training courses provided by CFG and all of the mentors are experienced technologists working in the industry. That makes them great contacts for the future, as well as an invaluable source of advice. One of our lead instructors from Bank of America, Andrea Ionescu, has recently been nominated for the 2020 Women in Software Power List. You can catch Andrea tomorrow on the How to Max Your Impact workshop. I took this quote from CFG's website, which really I think sums up um, what it's all about. Code First Girls are dedicated to transforming tech by providing the skills, space, and inspiration for women to become kick-ass developers and future leaders. You are those kick-ass developers and future leaders that we are all looking for. So I wanna share some of Bank of America's recent successes through our partnership with Code First Girls to emphasize just what's possible for each and every one of you. Each of the people I'm gonna talk about have come through Code First Girls mentoring scheme where members are mentored by women technologists at Bank of America. If you haven't participated yet, check it out. It's a great opportunity to build lasting relationships with experienced technology professionals. So I'm gonna start with Hayley. Hayley Lee joined the bank in 2018 and is halfway through a degree apprenticeship. That means she works in a development team for 80% of her time and spends 20% of her time studying. Degree apprenticeships are fairly new in our industry, but are gaining momentum with more places offered each year. They're a great way to get into technology and definitely worth exploring. So at the end of four years, Hayley will have a degree in computer science. Hayley works as part of the robotics and process automation team in Bank of America and has recently given a presentation at the bank's DevCon conference on can robots ever be human? Hayley has studied biochemistry at university but wasn't sure that was where she saw her future. She signed up to some CFG courses and realized she had a passion for coding. She joined the CFG mentorship scheme and was encouraged to apply for a technology mentorship apprenticeship at Bank of America. Hayley says, CFG helped kickstart my career in technology by teaching me valuable skills and introducing me to other amazing women in technology. Tiffany, who you're gonna to talk to um, on the Future Stars career journey session tomorrow, joined the bank as a graduate working in the ESG department and is now in the final first year of the technology apprenticeship program. Tiffany said, before joining Bank of America, I didn't have an interest in working in technology because I thought it was not an option for me. I had no STEM background. However, through the bank's support of Code First Girls, the impossible became possible. I was inspired by the bank talent, CFG volunteers, and was supported every step of the way. I have forged the beginning of my career in technology and an ambitious dream has materialized, something I believe would not have occurred without joining CFG. And Cleona, who's my final success story, studied an undergraduate degree in neuroscience, but knew she didn't want to pursue academia. She chanced on the Code First Girls mentorship program and applied. It ended up being exactly what she needed. She learned from each of her mentors about a career in tech, what she should be focusing on to improve, and how she could get experience in technology. She hadn't considered Bank of America before, but each of her mentors suggested she would be an ideal candidate for the summer internship program. So she applied and the rest is history. Cleona said, it's my, Cleona said that um, her, the women who mentored her, her uh, could see her potential and talent and put her forward for this great opportunity. It's a brilliant success story that shows the value in programs like this. It allowed someone like me, who's not the typical candidate for such an internship, to confidently thrive in a technology role. So our, our success short stories show that it's possible to embark on a career in technology without a university degree in computer science or a related subject. If you've successfully completed a Code First Girls coding course, then you're likely to have the analytical mind and problem solving capacity we're looking for. Remember, we're looking for potential, not real life experience or of doing the role. So what's holding you back or preventing you taking that first step? Are you worried you're not smart enough? People won't take you seriously? Or is the risk of switching career paths just too scary? Trust me when I say there are times when everybody feels like that, regardless of their qualifications and their levels of experience. 
I want to leave you with one final story. It's not CFG related, but it's one that I hope will resonate with many of you. About 10 years ago, I had a brilliant executive assistant. She was super organized, great communication skills, was proactive, collaborative, really analytical. If you think about it, a good executive assistant or office manager needs all of these skills, especially if their boss is as disorganized as me. I felt she had enormous potential and I wanted her to consider a career in technology, but she was resistant. She just didn't believe she could do it and didn't have the confidence to take the leap. I continued to nag her and eventually we compromised. She didn't think she could be a coder, but she thought she might be able to do project management or business analysis. Fast track 10 years and she's a senior program manager leveraging all those skills she built as an executive assistant, but delivering complex technology programs for a large financial company in Australia. Did you know that an HP report found that men will apply for a job if they only meet 60% of the qualifications, but women will only apply if they meet 100% of the qualifications? My executive assistant was a really good example of this and would probably never have taken the plunge without lots of encouragement. Codefest, Girl, Codefest will offer a, an array of options for you to explore, as well as a large number of participating companies and attendees, which will give you lots of opportunities to make new contacts. I really hope you take advantage of all that Codefest offers and take the first steps to becoming the kick-ass developers and future leaders that Codefest Girls is striving to create and which we as hiring managers are looking for. Let Codefest be your catalyst. Be brave, embrace the change, and launch your career in technology.